Welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Bay, Nerd Chuck, and this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, aka the internet's most passionate wine program, and I am one of the most passionate people I know as a guest today. I am very, very thrilled to have a dear friend of mine on the show. I don't know how much of a wine expert he is, but I know you drink a little Davino. I'm so, a wine drinker. That's And you know what? That's the most important part, but he's also one of the most successful authors I know, and more importantly, just one really interesting, good dude. Tim Ferriss, thanks for being on The Thunder Show. Thanks for having me, buddy. He's also very tough. He already broke my back. <laughs> Why don't you tell the few Vaniacs out there who don't know who you are, uh, what you do. Uh, I am an author. I wrote one book, so that qualifies me as an author. But you sold 40 billion copies. 47 billion copies. The four-hour work week, uh, which... Matt, let's link that up underneath for anybody that doesn't own it. Thankfully, he's done well. 35 languages. Uh, been on the New York Times for two years, actually, now. And, so ridiculous. Um, very ridiculous. It's unbelievable. Also, also uh, angel investor, so I'm an investor in uh, a bunch of companies. A lot of them you will be hearing about, but Twitter would be one that some people have heard about. And uh, that's pretty much what I do. I work with startups and write You've and blog. You've pretty, pretty darn entrepreneurial. I've tried. You've I'm succeeded. perpetuating the illusion as far as I can take it. How much into vino are you? Here, here, here? Uh, it really depends on the varietal. And actually, uh, that's that's why I was jamming with Matt about Malbec. So I never, even though I lived in California and have lived there since 2000, I never really got into wine until I moved to Argentina. And they had long meals and wine was part of the meal. Uh, mandatory. Mandatory. And Malbec was the varietal. I'd never been exposed to it and just fell mm -hmm. in love with it. And that's really what got me into wine. So... Uh, I'd say with Malbec, Zinfandel, I'm um, up here, enthusiasm-wise, mm -hmm. uh, knowledge-wise, still pretty far mm -hmm. on the... But you're tasting. I'm tasting. That's and, what you need to do. Uh, that's about it. All right, a couple things before we get into the show. Some clarifications, Mott. Mott, you've got a lot of linking up to do. I'll give you some links. There was a lot of hoopla about my reaction to the Mark Sanchez pick. I'd like to welcome Mark to the New York Jets today and also explain what was happening with what some people would call, I don't know if you saw it, Agent, I had maybe some sour pusses on ESPN and NFL Network. Here's what happened. The Jets moved from 17 to five in the draft. Mm -hmm. For a team to make that kind of jump, and I know the draft chart and what the points are. See, I'm not a casual fan. Please don't mistake me as a naive, average Jets fan always making those kind of reactions because if you've looked, I've been on ESPN for the last five years, or five years now in a row, I've been positive over almost every pick, including the Brickable Shaw Ferguson, Vernon Golston, a lot of people think is a bust, he's not gonna be, wait till you see what happens. But most of all, here's what happened. To go from 17 to five, I thought the Jets had to trade their first, their second, their third, maybe a second and a third next year. Five picks. Or, at worst case scenario, a first, a second, a fourth this year, and their first next year. So when I heard that the Jets are on the clock and that's when they, and then Sanchez gets drafted, I'm still in a very sad place. I have no idea what Mark Sanchez is gonna do. I think very good things, I hope. But I was absolutely convinced. And you know, they announced the trade much later, Mott. They announced a trade when, you know, probably 10 minutes after, the camera didn't come back to me after there. If they saw my face after there, they would have seen me dancing in the streets. We traded a first and a second and three journeyman players. Good guys, I love Coleman and Abram Elam and Brett Ratliff, but at the time, Mott, me and AJ were praying, worst case scenario, first, second, fourth, and a first, that's a lot to give up, four picks for, you know, especially when Jay Cutler, though a, a psycho in a lot of people's minds, a more proven quarterback, went for a couple of ones uh, and a third. So I was very worried that the Jets, because all the talk was that the Redskins were gonna make a big push, went out of their way and got ripped off. And when they didn't, I felt much, much better. But the capture at the time, since I didn't have the knowledge of all the picks, was me being upset, Tim. I agree with everything I that you just it. said. I appreciate it. And also, if, yeah, go ahead. If you don't know anything about football, then that makes two of us. <laughs> so. Nice. Mott, so that's what happened. Mott thinks, uh, you know, and I'm sure a lot of you think I'm dancing. How could I change my mind in one day? I mean, I, I've only seen two games with Mark Sanchez. I know everybody thinks he's a good prospect. Um, I always support all Jets players. That's been well established. It's just I thought we got, I, I had to assume we got hammered. 17 to 5, Mott, you know this. To go from 17 to 5 is very rare without giving up a fortune. Well, you know, the story I told you, I, when I saw that they draft, I was actually happy for you because you guys need a quarterback. Listen, this is a quarterback league. 
You have to have one. I don't know if Mar- listen. I'm still pretty. And listen, I like Kellen Clemens. I think we need. We still need a receiver badly. We still need a tight end. So I thought we packaged all these picks, and I'm like, you know, if he doesn't work out, I mean, I don't like to draft in the first ten picks to begin with. The money, the risk factor. But anyway, that's that. Also, I can't go on without giving a huge shout out. Just back. Maybe you can see a little color more than normal. Thunder Cruise was amazing. We're definitely going to do it next year. Uh, we're going to have highlights for all you Vaniacs that missed it this year. Huge mistake. It was Rip City Mott. You're coming next year. I don't want to hear any lip. Bring the lovely wife. We're going to crush it. It was amazing. Um, lots of wine drank. Many people made comments that uh, the wine itself, the wine events itself, paid all the extra cruise and all that was an afterthought. 300 tastings the last night. Is that about right? Yeah, we had a 300 bottle tasting on the Thursday. We had four seminars, we had wine at dinner. The the people that came on the trip were amazing. Met so many longtime maniacs like Carlos from Panama. Uh, yeah, you like that Concepcion was there. Uh, you know, Ken P from the forums was there. I mean, just a, enormous amounts. Will Gosling almost won the trivia con. It was just a great group of people. Huge diversity, which made me very uh, thrilled. Did some business chat chats there too, which was a lot of fun. So, uh, a lot going on. Draft, you know, the cruise last week. One of my favorite peeps in the world on the show. It's good to have you, man. Yes, that's Let's good. taste some wine. Yes. First wine, the big C on it. Um, this is a Bodeja Golar Classico 2007 Malbec. Uh, 88 points Tanzer, 10 US dollars. So very attractive. Malbec, you know, is a varietal that is so hot. We recently said, we want to take a look at the bottle. We recently said um, in an email that Malbec was the new Pinot Noir because the mm. sales of Malbec have exploded. We haven't seen a, a blow up by percentage like this since sideways um, effect on Pinot Noir. So Malbec is really on fire with no real good reason other than it's good value and good wine. Um, you know, there's been no movie for Malbec, maybe because Tim Ferriss is endorsing it. That could be a very good reason since he sold 47 good trillion books. Um, but other than that, there's really no obvious reason Malbec has exploded other than quality price ratio. I think it's new too. A lot of people haven't heard yeah, about it. Yeah, that's a very valid point. And uh, Argentina's also really come into the limelight. A lot of expats or uh, Americans, especially, I mean, even our, in our age range, moving down to Buenos Aires and staying there. So I think there's a lot of word coming back. There was a couple people on my trip that lived in Argentina full time. So yeah, I mean, it, it seems like a, a lot of that action is ha- What's going on down there? It's, is it the girls? Is it the food? What, what's, it's what's... it's the girls, yes. You have the uh, you have the the Spanish, Italian, German mix of blood, because really Buenos Aires was formed by immigrants from those three places. Uh, and that's how Malbec came to mm-hmm, Argentina, mm-hmm. based on my understandings from the Italians. And at the time, tell me if this is true, because I've been told this, that it was really considered by many almost a throwaway grape. Blending grape. Blending grape. Mm-hmm. And it came down to Argentina and really found its own. And yeah, I mean, it was. if you go back way back in Bordeaux, mm-hmm. it's one of the, um, and was used pre for Laxfra a lot more. And then into the 1900s, a lot less yeah. in Bordeaux. It's really found its home in Argentina. Yeah. Um, it's a varietal that is very easy drinking, mm-hmm. very fruit forward, but has complexity. So it's got more going on than maybe what Merlot as a blending grape brought yeah. to the table. And if you do eat meat, grass-fed beef with... Mer- uh, not with Merlot. Uh, no, 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 no. Well, no, no, don't just, don't no, do that. I, no, I'm just kidding. Ferris, I know you're stronger than I am, but yeah. I'll throw it down, right, Ma? Oh, no. no right. Merlot's fine, but... Understood. You're about. real, yeah. yeah. You're uh, a Malbec fan. I am. A huge fan. I am. Good. Give it a sniffy sniff. Let's see what you get. Now, this is owned by a Brazilian gentleman who came back and bought family vineyards. I really like the price point. And Tanzer, 88 points, that's really high. Um, what are you picking up here? I'm picking up a lack of wine vocabulary. Uh, Excellent. I really don't know where to begin. I'd like to take, I'll take your lead. Okay, let's uh, jump into this. The first thing I really get is raspberries, like crushed raspberries, uh, almost like um, a raspberry jam component. It's very fruit forward, right? It does have a jam component, yeah. Right? Preserve type. Absolutely, it's more, it's not like raspberries, if you like crush them in your hand, it's more preserved style. So it's it's got viscosity, let's say, on the nose. Yeah, that's, now what would you call this? Legs, Legs. which I don't refer to a lot, something I never talk about on the show because it's it's an overrated kind of thing in my opinion, but it's fun to look at, right? It's fun to look at. You like legs? It's fun to look at legs. Now, I'm also picking up on the back end a little bit of like a, a peppered jerky kind of thing. I wouldn't call it gaminess that I sometimes pick up. More of like a... a, like a no, it does though. It does though. I mean, it has a bit of a sort of almost, um, not to push it too far, but like a venison-like 
Yeah. Uh, I mean, there, there is there is a bit of a... It's a lot of fruit. It's yeah. a lot of fruit, guys. I mean, this is a really fruit-driven wine. Um, you know, a lot of people that like Shiraz would like this kind of nose, um, where I think it's going to differentiate from a sugar-fied Shiraz maybe is on the palate. I don't know. I've never had this producer. Let's give it a whirl. You want to keep that tough guy persona? Working on my cholesterol. <laughs> Great count. Um, what do you think? Now, just because we're doing a Malbec show, don't feel an inherent need to be like, yeah, I like the Malbec. No, 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 no. Everyone's a different well, snowflake. Yeah. Do you like this? Is your style not your style? I do. I mean, I find that some Malbecs tend to be a little, for me, tannin heavy, mm -hmm. and I could be just making that up, but this, this does Meaning not... Meaning bitter on the back end yeah, for you? Yeah, bitter okay. on the back end. This does not have that sort of cotton mouth type effect are at you, least on me. Are you picking up the heavy black tea component on the back yeah, end? Yeah, it does have Because I know you're a tea drinker. I am. Uh, it, it has it heavy. It I mean does, like yeah. heavy black tea on the back yeah, end. Yeah, it does. It has like a Darjeeling heaviness on the back. Uh, would I drink it? Yeah, I would. But I'm, I'm still curious to see what we have coming. But at 10 bucks, you think that's a pretty... I mean, 10, that's a, oh, t at $10. Yeah. yeah. I mean, because really... For, and you can see the natural reaction yeah, there. Yeah, for me... It's a value play. I mean, for me also, there's, there's a lot of good wine in California, but for $10, I'm not looking at something that's going to absolutely blow me away necessarily, but I'm looking for something that will pair well with food and be a good value for a meal or a regular drinking wine, and I could, I could see this being that wine. Outrageous, almost borderline obnoxious level of black tea on the back end. It's really like, like absolutely getting like dried black tea and putting it in your mouth. Um, on the initial attack, I get a cherry juice. If you taste it again, a quick shot of like cherry juice translates nicely into a mid-palate that goes back to that raspberry flavor, and then you get into that tea, that pepper, kind of beef jerky, venison, gamey thing kind of doesn't translate as much on, on the wine. It's really more fruit driven. Given that nose, I was expecting a, a little bit of like a gamey kind of um, bacon fat kind of play, which I sometimes pick up in Malbecs. That did not translate here. It was more heavy on the black and red fruit, or oh, excuse me, red fruit, because it's cherries and raspberries. Uh, a little hot on the finish, I get a little heat here, 14% alcohol content, comes through across a little bit. But as a $10 value play, very interesting and much, much more complex than a lot of California Merlot, Australian Shiraz, uh, even Rhone Valley Syrah blazed wines, uh, has a lot more complexities going on, mainly from that back end tea, black, you know, pepper kind of thing on the back end. Mm -hmm. And that's where this wine gets controversial. I think 80% will like it because it's got that interestingness, but I do believe there's a 20% crowd that won't like that back end because oh, it's don't. a little hot, it's a little bitter. Yeah. For you to say it's not tan and heavy allows me to kind of place your palate yeah. because there is tannins here. It's not completely yeah. soft, um, but it's a pretty darn good wine. I think Tanzer's in the right boat. To me, this is about an 87 point wine and a 10 bones, I think a very, very value driven Malbec that I would definitely not kick out of bed, for example. No, no kicking out of bed. No. Anything last thing to add to this? Uh, the one thing I would add is that the uh, the gaminess that uh, some people get from not just this but other Malbecs actually goes really well. Not to belabor the point, but grass-fed <laughs> beef specifically because Has people... the grass-fed beef industry paid you before you came out here? No. <laughs> just curious. I'm getting my standard 15%, nothing unusual. Uh, but there, there is... There, it oh, is outstanding. I know. No doubt. And the taste, though, some people do find it uh, unusual gamey. because it doesn't have the intramuscular fat, the marbling that people are accustomed to, but it's so tasty. But pair those two together if you eat meat. Or if you like uh, wines from the south of France and found to be great compliments as really? well. Like what, for example? Like, like a wine from Languedoc that's heavy on the peppered Syrah, mm. Grenache, Carignan. These yeah. varietals tend to do extremely well. You'd like that. So I would look for Languedoc and Provence. Nice. Especially from 2005. And Provence, especially if you can find something for 2005, heavy on Syrah, Grenache, or mm -hmm. or, or Carignan. The other, just to jump back into the grass-fed beef to really beat a dead horse, Argentines don't use a lot of flavoring on their meat, and part of the reason is they use different elements of the meal, like wine, to add enhance the, and change the other. And elements. what else? What else would they use besides wine? Uh, they would use side dishes. They would use very little, so salt, pepper on the beef. I mean, they really stick with the the raising of the cattle to give it the flavor, and then they would use something called a chimichurri, which is like a it's an sounds herb. like a Star Wars character. It is a Star Wars character. They actually raise them and slaughter them. Also grass fed. Is it delicious? It's awesome. Is it like half R two, half Chewbacca? <laughs> Let's go to France.
Have you ever had a Cahors? I haven't, and I'm very excited. And about this is this. Malbec in France. I know, I'm very excited uh, about this. Cedre, uh, 2005 Malbec, 13 US dollars, 88 points, Wine Spectator. Uh, Matt's coming in. Yes, Maddie. Everything's fine? Okay, keep going. Uh, okay, now Cahors uh, produces some of the most interesting Malbecs in the world, in mm -hmm. my opinion. Um, to people that want a little bit more of an earth tone, less fruit, you get a lot more fruit forward in Argentina. Mm -hmm. Cahors is gonna give you more of that old world love. Right, right. I think you're gonna taste it in the terroir. Let's give it a sniffy sniff first. Not crazy aromatic. No, right? No, very subdued. I'm yeah. used to the. I'm, I'm not Big used fruit, to. Right? I'm not used to the old world Malbecs. Yep. I've had very little, and they tend to really hit you in the nose uh, when you're getting them from Argentina or from Chile. But this is very subdued. What I am picking up is a chalkiness and like a Kirsch Royale kind of component to it. So almost like a, a grape candy getting chalked up. So um, definitely chalky and like dusty on the nose. Yeah, like a dusty sulfurous right? smell. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's give it a whirl. Kind of tight, a little awkward. <laughs> it's a bit chalky in the uh, in the mouth as well, not just in the nose. It's like somebody stuck stuck a huge piece of chalk in your mouth. It's like if, if like you came over and I was like, Tim, you know, I really like you. Here, here, here you go. Eat this. You know, um, that kind of style of chalk, right? Yeah, it's I mean, really it's like, chalky. It's like you know, like high school, like you did this and you like walked in and bit it. Do you also taste the very heavy sour cherry component? Yep. Even as even yeah, as you're doing that, that right now, that. it's it's like in the finish. That's mm -hmm. what it tastes like. Right. right now, I taste sour cherries mm -hmm. and chalk and chalk. You're, you're, you're intrigued by that, aren't you? Because like, it's so chalky. I am. It's chalky. I don't know if I could do... A lot uh, of this. See, it, it, because I, the way that I judge Malbecs for me is over the course of a meal. And I think I could do a glass of this, but I'm not sure if I could do three or wow. four. Wow. Hold on. First ever B on Wine Library TV. Mott. See what happens here? Let's see what happens here. Mott, it's coming in. Zoom it. Get the camera going. Mott, it's over here. He's behind the bottles. Yeah, that's all right. We'll get to him. Hold He's on. good. He's a very interesting character. Whoa. Whoa. Hold on. This is an amazing Tim. This is a. This You're is such a, an all natural guy. See what happens. You come. This is a wildlife moment. This is that's very, actually a chimichurri. Is this a chimichurri? <laughs> I believe that this be whoa, whoa. I love this. This is very exciting. I'm hoping he like lands in my glass. Oh, he just walked into the. Ma, what are you trying to capture him? Kill. Don't kill him, Ma. Oh, no, no, Ma, no. don't kill him. With the no, no, book. don't kill him with the biodynamic book. <laughs> He's a, he's fine. <laughs> biodynamic. <laughs> brings up. That is biodynamic. Matt, don't kill the bee. Matt, did he get the, bee, okay. did the gonna... bee? Did the bee get his tear time? Yeah, he got a cameo. Okay, right. he's up there. All right. I'm not sure I like this wine. How about you? I'm not a big fan. Is it just too austere to you? Is yeah, it, and it's, it's not it's, delicious? It's not delicious. Yeah. It's sort of Friar Tuck, uh, uh, maybe a little bit too whipping myself over the back. Mm hmm. Chalky austere experience for me. I like the big fruit. Uh, not to say that I could do without, that I couldn't do without the fruit, I could, but it's too chalky for me. I agree, I mean, this one dimension that this wine brings to the table is this chalkiness, it's kind of raw, uh, Eddie Murphy raw, for example. <laughs> um, I think the Wine Spectator totally overrated this wine. It's very Oof. one dimensional. Yeah. I don't like the fruit. Um, I don't, and I love Old World, but there's no vegetal aspects to this. This is just like chalk covering some old, beat up, tired cherries. I mean, just not interesting and no delicious factor. Outside of the intrigue, did he get caught in the light? Now he's in the light. I love him. Um, you know, outside of chalkiness and, and, and a little bit of cherry, it's a very one dimensional, very boring wine with no delicious factor, which really relegates it to somebody who's just looking for something different. And to buy something at 13 bones for the sake of being different is just not that appealing to me. I think 88 spectators way too high. I'm going 77 points in this wine. I'll go 76, just because I like 77, the number. You do like 77, the I number? Do. Why? So I was born 77. You're a youngster. All right. Seven's lucky. Let's move on. I like 77. <laughs> but 76, America's birthday, I don't give a rat's ass. Uh, 76. 76 is a complicated number. 
<laughs> All right, let's. Uh, <laughs> that was so profound. Um, let's make sure. Uh, you know, you know the guest gets to pour ask. It out. The, yeah, pour it out. All right. But I have a little side question today. I know ready. a lot of you are a fan of Tim's, and you know his book invokes enormous amounts of reactions, whether positive, some negative. I assume sometimes. Violently negative. Really? Oh yes. How do you feel about stealing American jobs and sending them to India, which right. is an amazing critique of something that I don't recommend. <laughs> but yeah. So I'm sure you get a lot of that. <laughs> anyway. Um, so if you have a question for Tim, please leave it in the comments. All right. Yeah. So uh, Henry Lagarde, 2006. Uh, single vineyard, uh, Malbec from Mendoza, 15 US dollars, 90 points, Jay Miller. Uh, good score by Jay, uh, 90 points, which is a good score, 15 bones, fair price, 2006 vintage. This is a new world producer from what I understand. I have a feeling on what I know about this. It comes from 69 year old vineyards. Another good number? <laughs> I figured you'd like that number. Um, I'm not kidding either. Oh, there it is. So uh, that's not accidental. I bet you they have they're sixty eight, <laughs> seventy years <laughs> old, and they've well, they can only rounded up or rounded down. They can only use it one time, right? Ah, that's so, true. Um, let's give it a sniffy sniff. Okay. Much more aromatic. Much more aromatic. Cherry cola for days. Ah, oh, cherry cola. Good old cherry cola. You don't drink any of that kind of stuff anymore. Oh, I did. I did. Recently? Back... No, not recently. But I do love. How about cinnamon on the nose? Let's see here. You know, I'm a huge, I'm a cinnamon junkie, so let's, let's I see. I love here. cinnamon. It's almost eggnog like because of the oak. You know, I was going to say, actually, more so than cinnamon, there's an eggnog. Right? Well, I think that's where I'm getting it. It's like eggnog with a little cinnamon on it, you know? This would be. Uh, this is very flavorful on the nose, isn't it? This would be like a, a Ceylon cinnamon. Just recently had a t cinnamon tasting. Clearly, somebody's expanding their palate. Clearly, someone is <laughs> overreaching and trying to impress people with no, their no, cinnamon no, knowledge. No, but, no. Uh, That's very impressive. I was so thinking cassia, which is the most typical type of cinnamon that you see in the store, right, is actually not a, a, it's not technically a cinnamon. So it's, uh, it's a sugar. It's meat, is what it is. No, there's Ceylon and then Saigon. But yeah, you're right. There is a, there's definitely an eggnog. And lots of cherries this. and raspberries and just like fruit punch. Yeah, yeah, very, very fruity. All right, let's give it a whirl. Mr. Ferris? Fruity from start to finish for me. Yep. And uh, a bit more, and again, this is just it's, my very yeah, subjective yeah. palate, but more tannic, everybody's more more tannic, uh, or at least yeah, more tannic than the first we had. Okay. But similarly strong uh, fruit from start to finish. I, I only got the fruit really in the first hit with that very first bottle. Tap? This is has oh, a little the bit first bottle. Okay. Yeah, has it's more sustained. Do you like this style I more uh, than the first one? <laughs> I would say I like this. The first one probably be less class. likely to give me a headache because this is so big. Yeah. And so that is that an important factor for you? Like, uh, if you it, drank this by the glass, you'd be like, "Ooh, I'm a little bit worried about the headache play." Uh, it, not just by the glass, because I, I I'll tend to Try sit down again to see what right. you think. Sit down and really have a bottle or two with a bunch of friends at dinner. I mean, yep. that's like I like play. to have long meals, yep. which means we're going to down a pretty decent amount of, wine amount of wine over over a longer period of time. But um, that's definitely a factor for me. That's why part of the reason I don't, for whatever reason, Cabernet Sauvignon really gives me an awful, awful headache. It is, it is the one varietal that always nails me. And now back to that. I think I prefer the first. I really like the last. It's a quality wine, uh, at least to my naive <laughs> taste buds, untrained mouth. Uh, it's, it's a nice wine, but I would still go with the first one. What don't you like about the second one in comparison? Uh, maybe you can translate this into Go ahead. More I, think I, words, I think I am. It's, I'm it's trying to lead you up it's to something. It has a, a bite that the first one doesn't. Um, and how about heaviness on the palate? It's heavier on the palate mm -hmm. for me. And is that good or bad? Uh, it, by the glass, I think it would be great, but 
for given my criteria for meal mm -hmm. over a longer period of time, having two or three glasses, I think it would be it would be overwhelming for me. I think it would, rather than complement the food, it could overpower it. Do you know me. what's bothering you? And the same reason you probably dislike many Cabernets. Okay. Ah, the Oak Monster Mott. This is one of the more substantial over oaked Malbecs I've ever had. Mm -hmm. And the reason you equate it to a headache is you're right. That overdone cedar oak thing just becomes too much for most people. Whereas the first one, if you notice, had a very focused fruit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it was like thinner and meaner and leaner and tighter. Yeah. <laughs> leaner. You like it that? It was right? leaner. I like that. You know, yeah. this is kind of like a little, it's kind of like the difference between me and you. You're like lean and tight. I've got a little chubby fat here. You know? Um, so, that's what's going on here. Plus, there's oak for days. I mean, yeah. if you drink that second wine again, and I'm, yeah, I mean, yeah. yep, just notice how much woody, cedar kind of stuff going on. I mean, you're kind of a in the nature kind of dude. You probably walked the jungles of the Philippines and ate the bark off trees, that kind of thing, you know? I love bark. You know, so? <laughs> This is heavy oak monster. Yeah, it really is heavy. Right. Why? Yeah, so I've so I've I've seen this happen over and over and over again on your show. Why do people over oak their wine? I Makeup. Don't, okay, it's to, it's to disguise or mask the elements that they don't want to highlight. Yep. Okay. That's it. That's it. Game over. Or they think, and this is where it gets really tricky, mm -hmm. that the oak is something people want, and if they can hit the right accord, because they can't always predict it, right. you know, it might get away from them. That oak smoothie play is very popular. Critics like it. Mm. A lot of the major critics give bigger scores to things that are, see, it gives the illusion of smoothness. Right. Right? right. You know what I mean? Like, it feels a little smoother, but it's just like, you know, it's different. This is, the, this is more truth because you're getting more of the vineyard. This gets over-oaked mm. um, and it hides it. There is a creaminess and on a one glass level could be more seductive. Right. It is just like men and women. You know, you get, you get, you know, if, you know, with makeup and maybe some implants. You know, dudes are getting implants now. Yeah, like six, one hit I was, wonder. I was thinking about one hit wonders, like blame it on the. Well, no, no even Lee had more than one. Toy Soldier, for example. Toy Soldier. Step by step. No, okay. you know like that song. We all fall down. Okay, you know. So, Dude, sorry, I'm getting that was excited. Good. Thanks, man. Um, that's what this is. You get into a place where you get tricked, and early on. Mm. When bitterness bothers you, uh -huh. this oaky style is easier to drink, it's smoother, but mm -hmm. really it's just like, you know, little love handles, which is fine. I actually like that. When it goes too far, it may not be as, you uh, know, to exciting. A threshold. Yes. And I think this wine is very over oaked, whereas the the Goulart, I think, was really focused in good fruit and a very service wine. Maybe it was even a little bit tough. Yeah. Yeah. Right yeah. yeah. Get a little bit of that. I might have even been a little tough in it at 87, first day back from trip, you know, da -da. Uh, drinking serious wine in Thunder Cruise. You know, um, I, this wine I think is, is overdone. I disagree with Jay. I think the fruit is delicious. I think it's smooth, but it's clearly just a basic over oaked product, in my opinion. And to me, this is more like an 83, 84 point wine. And I agree with you. I, I agree with what you. Did I give the, what did we give the first one? I gave it an 87, but I might have been a little tough. You might have even given it an 89 or 90. I think you really liked it. I would go for 90. There you I'm go. Really I like mean, it. and you know what? You, you know, I might have been I'm a after tough. longevity. I'm not after that one night stand with a wine that's got too much makeup on. I want something that I can you wake buy up in a the case morning. of and mm -hmm. have with And build a with family with. And build a family with. <laughs> yeah. it's, a, it's a really good wine. And really, in comparison, you could really see it shine. Mm -hmm. um, it's got really nice, soft, real tannins. Um, and that's the scoop with the Malbec. I mean, the, the poor Fr French wine over here, we're not even like, come on, is that even on screen? Let me see what's going on here. Look at it, it's not even on screen. It's, it's over here. It's, there it is, all it's by its lonesome. It's dejected. But it really, really is an issue. Where's the B? Can you see it? B is, B is found its resting place. Is the B done? That was a Did he get fried? Did he get fried in there? Uh, yeah, he got that's, that's You went into the melanoma 2000 to catch up with your tan after the cruise. Right? <laughs> that's, you know you what? got tan envy. That sucks. I was like, tr Ma tried. Bees. Ma still got what he wanted, which no is melanin. unfortunate. That sucks. That. Why so, you quick question for you I'm while sorry. I have you. Favorite Malbecs besides these? Any real highlights? Um, favorite Malbecs. I think Susanna Baba, when the style is not over oaked, is very exciting. I think Archival uh, Santiago, um, Archival Ferrer makes really, really good stuff. Um, there, yeah, there is a lot. I mean, there's a lot. Here's what I know about Malbec, what I'm excited about. There's a lot of Malbec wine. Navarita, $7.99. Dynamite. Yeah. Um, 
Clos de, uh, Clos de los Siete. I don't know who. I really don't know who makes it. I think that might actually be the the vineyard. But two thousand four Malbec, best Malbec I ever had. Loved it. Oh man, I had it at this uh, wine bar called uh, Grand Danson, which is in Buenos Aires. Unbelievable. Yeah. How but, often do you go to Argentina? Uh, I haven't been in about a year and a half, but I'd like to go every year. It's it's a fantastic. Shape. And then the reason people like Buenos Aires in, in particular is it really looks like Paris, effectively in South America. Right. So it's warm. And it's, it's very warm effectively. Paris. You go there in winter time, our time, and it's it's summer there. It's. And that's when you tend to like go. So. It's a good time. I, I hear rumors of a new book for you. Uh, yeah, so... Tell us the, the, everything the, about the, it. The latest... The this way we can have the scoop on. The latest is, uh, uh, I'm just finishing up the expanded and updated edition of the 4-Hour Workweek, so in the last two years, because I launched the blog at the same time as the book, and didn't have that laboratory for feedback uh, beforehand, um, the, the case studies, received 500, about 500 pages of case studies submissions from readers, which I was not anticipating, a huge volume, and it would have been really easy to pick the best and the worst if it was uh, mostly mediocre, but there's a lot of good stuff. So there's 60 to 70 pages of new content, um, primarily from readers, ways that they've tweaked and broken apart and improved upon my ideas. That so it's not like the book. seven and a half hour work week? Or? No, 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 no. It's still the four and a half hour work week, but with four and a half. Yeah, where did the half come from? I think I was thinking like was nine, nine and a half weeks. I don't we know what's, what's on my brain. Too much wine. Here? <laughs> was it always meant to be the half? Did you like hide that half hour? To, <laughs> that was with the uh, that was a foot. Tim, you know, I mean, the funny part is, you know, I have a business book coming out, which I appreciate the quote from, and yeah. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, you know, mine's like the anti four and a half. You know, mine's so, called So you know what? Here's you know? the thing: people view oh. us as as sort of Opposite, diametrically right? opposed. Yeah. Because I want to work four hundred forty. But here's the thing, right? And and people are like, oh, Tim Ferriss. Semantics, semantics. But, all right, so you can't have a book that's called the Four Hour Menial Task Work Week. It doesn't work. Okay, <laughs> so like, the Four Hour, right? You can't do that. It just doesn't work. And so I tested the Four Hour Work Week on Google AdWords along with about a dozen other titles. That that had the best click through rate, and so that was the title we went with. Smart. But you do what you. I mean, you are working on the things that you feel most passionate about. I don't think anybody's gonna. I think so many people that. take your book out of context. They, they take it out of context. But the title because, is so extreme, right? No, it is, and it's. But like, that it, was kind of brilliant because at least you got them in there, right? And you need to, and you need to polarize people. I mean, you have a tremendously strong follower base, but there are also people who don't like you. And ultimately, what? sorry, Thanks, man. but Mocking that's the, that's the price you pay for having a strong opinion about anything. And um, there's a lot of jet bands that were mad at me yesterday. I saw a lot of jet boards saying, "Who are those two douchebags that didn't like the Sanchez pick?" <laughs> so I get it. Yeah, get you can't it. you can't please everybody. By but. the way, I was wrong. You were wrong. I was wrong about the first line. I'm not kidding. It's grown on me substantially. By the way, this also proves I've been wrong on every review at some level. And I'm being serious about this. Wine evolves. Different mindsets. Maybe because I'm having a better time because you're here and it's good to have you here. I don't know what it is, but clearly, maybe because it was the first wine of the day, because usually I've tasted wine before I've been on done the show. It's a really good wine. This wine's evolving quite strongly, maybe because I went back after the Oak Monster and maybe maybe it's getting the benefit of doubt from that. But this is a good little $10 wine. I'm going to up it up to 89 points, Ma. If that's okay with you. Thanks, man. I'll meet your 89 and raise you one point. I'm going to go full 9-0. Mm-hmm. Whether it's 9-0, 89, 88 Tanzer, 87, me before. Blah, 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 me, blah. Uh, that was me rewinding. That was the B, sorry. Um, it doesn't really matter. The points are kind of relevant. This is one very good wine for 10 bucks. Yeah, yeah you I really, know? really like it. I mean, this is a pretty neat little wine. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thanks for having now me. Now the tradition. the tradition. You get to ask the question of the day. The question Any of the day. Any question you want. Okay. About, by the way, this is a great man. I just leaned back and he held my elbow. I don't know if you guys caught it. I didn't want you to so catch much. the back of your head. I appreciate you gotta that. Save That's that. very sweet. You gotta That's save people, your balance. People don't know your sweetness the way I do. I know. I bring him his slippers. Um, question of the day. Ask the Vayner Nation any question you want. It could be about your book. It could be about wine. It could be about life. It could be about Argentina. You know, meat that's grass fed. Whatever you'd like. Fire away. It could be totally random of things we haven't talked about, but they will answer it in the comments below. With questions for you, probably. Okay. Uh, if if you could never retire, if retirement's removed as a goal, how do your decisions and priorities change? That's it. Love it. By the way, that's weird because I'd never plan on retiring. I would, and uh, I would never ever think that you would retire. Why does anybody retire? Uh, because they, I think, defer what they want and take as a price of doing business 30 years of doing things that they don't want to do in particular. And, I agree with you. Uh, and they've been taught that that's the play. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and, uh... Ma, you want to retire? 
You do. And what do you want to do in that retirement? Nothing. Like, like, but do you think you'll be happy then? I don't know. Because you see that happening all the time. Like people don't, you know, and then they're like three days in, they're like, this sucks. This sucks. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's only so much golf you can play. Yeah. Or ping pong, which I'm starting to get into. I played it ping on, pong are you good is at a it? tough sport. I, I, well, I, I played was in China for a while. Those guys don't mess around. No, that's that different stuff. Yeah, that's the, they, they, the wrists. Wrists stronger than my ankles. You, with a little bit of me, and wonderful human beings like this, who are developing their palate and trying different things. Next time I'm we learning. have you on, we'll go in a totally different direction. All right. This was too much of a comfort zone for you. It was comfort zone. We're changing the wine world.